ReZero is so good. I don't think I've seen any other anime that is so consistent with the amazing episodes. Like, we're, what, seven, eight episodes in? I forgot. But every episode has blown me away in some way or another. And this episode... This episode is special. It has, like, so many different emotions. We learn things. There's suffering. There's even some beauty, kind of, sort of. And I'm just blown away. Like, the episode started off kind of like where we were last time. Uh, Ram is there to help Otto and Subaru get out of the sanctuary because Garfield is busy at the uh, ritual with Amelia. Though there is a slight issue, and that's that Subaru wants to go talk to Roswell. And we learn things. Like, I don't know quite what we learn, but... We definitely learned some stuff. We learned that Beatrice is not part of Witch's Cult, though, which, I mean, that's good. Like, I don't want her to be part of the Witch's Cult. I want her to be a good guy. Though, still, there, there's more to her than we know, for sure. And Roswell said something very interesting when Subaru returned. He commented that Subaru returned after three days, though it does not feel like a miraculous return. Why did he say that? Sure, Roswell speaks in riddles sometimes. But this here is interesting. Who returned in a miraculous way after three days? Jesus. Yes, we're, go we're getting biblical here. <laughs> Which, why would I bring that up? Well, why would Roswell equate three days to being a miraculous return? He lives in a fantasy world. He knows nothing about Christianity. Or does he? Crazy theory, right? Or is it? There are so many crazy things in ReZero that I have to wonder. I have to latch on to these other crazy ideas because who knows, they might be right. It wouldn't be awesome if I guessed something like way before anything like that. So yeah, I feel like this is showing that Roswell is either from Earth or knows something about Earth or is in some way connected to it. Or maybe this is just an idiom for nothing. We'll get more into the idioms later. But yeah, that's just my crazy theory. But we did find out that Roswell ordered Ram to help Subaru, which is good. And it shows that Roswell is at least somewhat on their side. But Subaru decides to take this opportunity to ask about Beatrice. Is she a member of the Witch's Cult? And Roswell obviously asks, well, why would you think that? And we learned that last episode when Subaru saw the gospel, which obviously that makes sense. But here we find that it is not actually a gospel, but is instead something resembling it, which is quite odd. But is it? But it is in fact a magical text that tells the future. Which makes me wonder, what is a gospel? If a gospel is an imitation of that, are gospels also things that tell the future, but they're flawed or missing pieces? What is a gospel anyway? But we also learned that Beatrice is not gospel. There are two copies in the world. So is the other copy. And Roswell also says that it is the closest there is to the Tome of Wisdom. So what is the Tome of Wisdom? <laughs> like, the crazy thing about ReZero here is, like, we get all these answers. But every answer comes with two more questions. And it is also interesting because you're like, Roswell has told Subaru to ask the question, or that Subaru, when he sees Beatrice, so should say to ask the question. And then Roswell also says that when she does, he's to answer, I am that person. And that would make Beatrice ally with him. So what does that mean? And this is because of the contract that she has with who I would assume is Roswell. Did they actually say that? I don't remember thinking in front of the contract was with Roswell. We're led to believe that. But we're led to believe a lot of things that aren't true. And then Roswell also says something very interesting. He is an ally to all of you. Well, that makes me wonder. Who is all? Is it like Subaru and Amelia? Is it Subaru and Ram and all of his friends? Is it to all the people in the sanctuary? Is it to all the people in the country, the world, the multiple worlds? What does all mean? Yeah, I don't know. This is, this is so crazy. Like, this is just the first major scene, too. We have so many other things, like the battle with Garfield. Though it's not really a battle, it's more like a slaughter. And one of the things that's interesting is, that, uh, is Garfield's idiom. 
seeing that this is Hoshin or this is Bannon's Hoshin's uh, sunset. I don't. Yeah, Hoshin was uh, Bannon's sunset is the same, which means absolutely nothing to us. And that's one of the things I like is that the world of ReZero has its own culture too. Of course, they would have different sayings. They probably are speaking a completely different language, but because the serious connection to the witch is like automatically translated for him, that's why like he can't read the writing. But yes, we know that Hoshin was Bannon's sunset is the same. That means that he is going to attack with all his strength, so either surrender or prepare to fight. So, Ram tries holding him off, Subaru and Otto run away, and then more violent things happen. All the other villagers try helping Subaru too, but they're struck down by Garfield. Like, I had no idea how powerful Garfield was, though if it makes sense that like he's half Beast Man and Frederica was a quarter, and Frederica was really strong, that means Garfield is even more powerful. He's also a giant kitty. Reference to Garfield, I would assume, which is kind of great. Yeah, scary kitty there. And then Otto is brutally murdered right in front of Subaru. So at this point, I was kind of sad because I knew that this was going to be a reset. The, the reason I was sad is because I love these moments between Otto and Subaru here. That they were like finally becoming good friends. And like Subaru needs a friend. He needs, he needs a lot. He needs friends, hugs, lots of therapy. He gets kind of some of that later on though. But Subaru doesn't die. In fact, he wakes up in the temple or graveyard. We're not entirely sure. And there's snow everywhere. Why is there snow everywhere? And why is there no one else? That makes me ask questions. Like, <laughs> what happened? Like, did time pass and is it now winter? I don't think that's one. Or did whatever happened kill Amelia and now Puck is freezing the world? That could be, but how much time was Subaru out? Was it days, months, years? Probably not years. But, you know, it could have been. And then while Subaru is exploring, having absolutely no idea what's going on, he runs into a rabbit. The rabbit looks kind of weird, like the red eyes of the horn. I didn't think anything of it. I thought, oh, that's just a weird Rezero monster. He goes to pet it, because rabbits are adorable, so of course you want to pet them. And it bites his finger off. And then another rabbit bites his leg off. And then the rabbits literally eat him. Like, there are like hundreds of them and they just like devour him. Apparently in the web manga, it's revealed, or web novel, it's revealed that they eat, ate him from the inside out. Which, and that's the most gruesome death Subaru has had yet, I think. I mean, he's had some bad ones, but I don't think anything as bad as that. Most of his deaths are pretty quick and... Well, I'm not going to say painless, but not as painful as this. And then he wakes up, coming back to life because returned by death. And time is reset back to where he was with Amelia when uh, after the first test. And he's lost it. Like he, It's revealed in the web novel. It's not spoilers because it's just like something left out. But it, to him, it felt like the rabbits were still inside him, eating him. I mean, like... He can't take it anymore. But fortunately, Echidona is there and she brings him into her place. I don't know what this is called. I think I might have, but I forgot. And he feels perfectly calm here, which... Yeah, it's a good thing he has Echidona. I never thought I would say that. But we learn from Echidona that this is because of the witch factor that... From drinking the tea and it's encouraged stability of the witch factor. I think. And Echidona just, like, I love the dialogue between her and Subaru. You know, she's saying that I'm ready to accept her gratitude now. And, like, just how Subaru, like, she has no idea how to deal with Subaru, which is amazing. And then Subaru also wants to get rid of the vow that makes it so he will forget about her. And she's like, um, okay. He even says that he'll pay whatever she wants. And, like, Echidona's like, well, no, it's like, it, like, I mean, this is great. This is great. <laughs> and then he just like gulps down the body fluids and then spits it out again. But here's the part of the episode that I love the most. Is that Subaru can actually tell Ekidono what has happened to him. He can tell her about return by death. 
He can tell her about all the painful stuff he's been through, seeing his friends and loved ones die over and over again, him dying over and over again, him feeling hopeless. And he just like says it over and over, saying, I can return by death. I can return by death. And this is so beautiful. I love how this scene show, shows Subaru as a person who would be emotionally destroyed by this. Like, here's the thing. From the viewer, we can think logically about the situation. If we were the viewer and we woke up where Subaru was here after dying, we would think, okay, I died again. I have more information there. Like, I know more about Garfield. I know that something very bad is going to happen with the rabbits. I know everything from talking to Roswell. So, from that, you would just deduce, okay, I'm here again. I'm going to, like, try a different path or try what worked before, try to figure this out. Like, approach this fully, fully logically. But Subaru is a person. People do not approach things fully logically. He has been through so much emotional, physical suffering. He can't just take it anymore. He can't do those things. He's too human for that. So instead, he breaks down. And being able to be fully known by Echidona, he breaks down and is held by her. And I just love how... Okay, that's the last screenshot I have. But she just wants to know all there is about him. And it's not obvious if Echidona is meant to be a good or a bad guy. Honestly, I can feel that way about pretty much the entire cast, though, so that really fits Re Zero. But here she is, being the person that Subaru needs her to be. Being just someone who can fully understand. And there's such a wonderful thing to feel like you are fully known and understood by someone. And so that's what Subaru gets here. And it's so wonderful. This episode had a ton of stuff happening to it. And these are just the biggest things. I know I could have gone more in depth with all of it. But, well, that would take even longer. I think just, like, going through the highlights like this, it's, that's the way I want to uh, share the episode with you all. So let me know what you thought of it. What part stood out to you the most? Do you think Subaru is going to suffer more next episode? I mean, probably he will. But how do you think that's going to happen? And also, no spoilers beyond this point in the anime, please, because, well, I have not read the web manga. I just heard those couple things from friends and web novel, not manga, whatever. I'm doing this in one take, so I'm not going to edit that part out. Still, thank you everyone for watching, listening to me ramble, and I will see you all next time.